while finally starting to dig through all of these old computers, including 486s and even earlier, I found this standalone motherboard for a 286, so I'm wondering if I can get this working. And there's really nothing on board for external peripherals, like no floppy controller, hard drive, any other I.O. ports. We just have seven expansion slots. So trying to figure out what this is and how to configure it, etched in copper on the bottom side. This motherboard is from 1990. And the part number is MB1212C. And when I looked that up, it's a BIOSTAR 286 12 megahertz AMI BIOS, no installed math coprocessor, and the chip is in a PLCC socket. And I tried looking for a manual, but all I can seem to track down is two pages out of some part of the manual showing things like RAM and jumper configurations. So I set the jumpers the way I think it should work, and based on having DRAM modules in both of these banks, which are 30 pin, I either have one meg or four megs of RAM. And these sockets, I believe, are for other DRAM configurations. So to get this thing running, I need things like a video card, a power supply, and maybe a speaker to plug in so I can hear error beeps. But first, to see if it's even in working order, as best as I can tell, I'm going to see if any tantalums or anything like that appear to be shorted by probing the power supply header. And I also need to remove this 3.6 volt rechargeable battery for the CMOS. Luckily it doesn't look like this one leaked and caused any corrosion, so I'm going to get that out of the way first. This is the best tool I've had in a long time that helps me out this S993 AAD soldering gun. Now I can put this aside for when I bring more batteries to recycle. And yeah, the motherboard looks clean around there. And if I want, I can put an external AA or AAA battery pack here for an external CMOS battery. I don't think it's worth buying another rechargeable to put in there. And now I want to check the power rails for any possible shorts from shorted tantalums or anything else going wrong. And I saw a video from another maker showing how he goes about this. Basically the header for this AT motherboard power has the four center pins as common ground. And then the next four going out toward each end are the plus and minus 5 and 12 volt rails, and there's a power good signal. So I'm just going to measure resistance from ground to those other pins and make sure nothing looks too low. And by that I mean maybe a few tens of ohms would start to make me feel suspicious. So there's absolutely no continuity there. This one's a couple of K. This one's a couple of K. And a couple of K four and a half megs, several hundred K, a couple of K, and no continuity. And then just ground to ground, that's where we get our less than one ohm. And another maker also suggests maybe initially starting to power this up with maybe a bench supply where you can current limit to just a few tens or hundreds of milliamps in case something happens when you first power up. But I'm just going to go for it. So I found this speaker with the four pin header taken out of something else long, long ago. I'll plug that in. And I also found this 16-bit ISA Trident VGA video card where the chip says 92. So I will use that after, but first I just want to power on and make sure nothing weird happens. And for a power supply, I have this other system here. It's the only one I've got with the same kind of cables. So I know the grounds go in the center. I find these tricky to plug in. There's hooks that seem to need to go on an angle or something. And now I'll throw the switch. So I just heard eight beeps, I think, after a little initial stuff. I think that's got to do with video card so obviously I don't have one plugged in. I just wanted to see if this thing even powers up. So 
I'm going to let that sit there for a little bit and do a burn in test and hopefully not a burn out test. See if anything appears to get hot or if anything shorts out. And I think you can get adapter cables or something to go from a more modern ATX power supply cable to this because I need this power supply for this system, which is a 486. So the CPU is, of course, a little warm. It would be nice if I had a thermal camera. For now, I'm going to power down and get this video card installed. I don't know if it matters what slot, so I'm just going to pick one. And I have an LCD monitor here. And I have an old AT style keyboard. So I've got this keyboard available. And this monitor looks like it could be cleaned a bit, but I'm going to power on with the video card. Oh! Uh, I saw the Trident card um, info there. Counting RAM. Looks like we've got more than one meg. And a bunch of error beeps. Oh, 1920k RAM. Oh, it's counting higher on the RAM. But it didn't quite make it to 3 megs even. Okay, well, press delete for setup. CMOS setup. I don't know what X CMOS is. Oh, monochrome. Well, we could configure floppies. 360K up to 1.44 meg, five and a quarter, three and a half. Hard drive. Oh, you have to enter in all of the cylinder head landing zone sectors and all of this manually. But I don't have a hard drive controller. Primary display not installed. Keyboard not installed? This is at least running. That's what I wanted to check for now. I'm going to need to figure out about possibly a hard drive controller and a floppy controller. Get an external battery pack for CMOS. And this will be a little experimental system I can work on and even try to get it working with old modems. Just to have at least one retro machine older than a 486 available. Thanks for watching.